All right, gang. How are we doing? Good to see you all. <clears throat> see a lot of people already popping in. And uh, I have uh, my friend and uh, group member Jason Mercer here waiting in the wings. He's going to pop on and uh, give us some really cool information that he's been working on lately. Um, and, you know, the cool part is, you know, I'll say this again once I bring him in. Um, <clears throat> what he's done is he he basically uh, used a lot of the principles that I wrote about in my book. And he went about it just finding, making his own discoveries. And, uh, and it's really, really, he's taken it and really running with it. He's taken it in uh, directions that um, I hadn't anticipated. And uh, I just think it's really cool. Hey, Daniel, Jennifer, I uh, see you both here in the chat. Um, <clears throat> if you're just joining us for the first time, make sure, and if you're on the Facebook side, make sure you head over to StreamYard uh, forward slash Facebook and register your account so that I can see your name when you pop up on our chat. Uh, otherwise, it'll just say Facebook user. So if you haven't done that already, make sure you head over there and do that, and it will kind of refresh itself here in real time. So, hey, Tom, glad you could make it. Good to see you guys. So without any further ado, I want to uh, invite my friend uh, Jason. And so, hey, Jason. Hey, uh, hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the show, man. I'm glad you could make it. And uh, I've been really looking forward to this uh, all week long. And um, hey, Linda, good to see you, Curtis. Um, Tom Burns in the house. Got Daniel Spino here. Um, and so a lot of you were already familiar with uh, Jason's work. I mean, uh, he's been uh, posting some really cool stuff um, uh, on the different Facebook groups that we're all members of. And hopefully you've, you've been able to check it out. But tonight we're going to kind of do a, he's going to do a deep dive into um, <clears throat> some of his findings uh, of late. Hey, Judy, always good to see you. Um, and, oh, she's giving you a greetings there, Jason. Great to oh, Yes. Hello, Judy. <laughs> You've got some familiar names in this group tonight for sure. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So, so uh, Jason, if you would, I'd... I'm going to ask you to go ahead and introduce yourself to uh, uh, any of the uh, viewers that are watching here live and will be watching it later yeah. when it's recorded. Uh, tell us about yourself, your background, what you do, and, and how did you get sucked into this rabbit hole that we're all in? Yeah, kind of exactly. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Jake, for inviting me today. Uh, first, I'm just a huge fan of the Curse of Oak Island on the History Channel. I've been watching it. Every season now, I've watched every episode two or three times, honestly, probably more than that. It's just a great show. Um, I'm a member of John Simmer's Quest of Oak Island Facebook group. And uh, Chris Dona invited me into his group uh, after he noticed me on John's uh, group. And uh, I've been busy looking at bacon related art for about a year now. Um, and now, you know, in your group, Ghost of Bacon and uh, sharing ideas with everybody. And, uh, you know, back in 2020, if things were tough for everybody and we were sitting around and <laughs> there wasn't a whole lot great on TV and what are we gonna do? We're waiting for right. Quest of Oak Island to come back on. And uh, so I started diving into some of these uh, theories and things that you guys were already looking at and I didn't understand. I was trying to understand. <laughs> um, it's it's quite the learning curve, isn't it? It's like yes. It, it is. It is. I was way back. I mean, I had the training wheels on and nothing made sense. And and it started to come together and your your book came out and hopefully I was one of the first to get it. I remember ordering it. And um, all of a sudden, you know, you were breaking these ciphers down and putting a numerical value on letters and names. And uh, it was about that time I started looking at these artworks and breaking them down in like a mechanical drawing um, and finding this blueprint behind it. But right, uh, right. Um, yeah, back in 2020, I was in between jobs. I had I just retired from a job working in law enforcement 20 years. And um, I'm, I'm currently kind of in a familiar field now working with cool, uh, school security. Um, 
And, um, but just as a hobby, uh, I love looking at this stuff. I, I love chatting with you guys. And um, I, I get goosebumps every time I find something new. And it's gotten a little bit faster um, with bacon related material because a lot of times it's repetitive. He's, he's sharing the same symbols and the same uh, designs in exactly. a lot of the same material. Exactly. So, uh, like you mentioned before, I'm, I'm getting an eye for just seeing the work and, and then I just start digging and finding stuff. So, yeah, it, it, isn't it strange? I mean, and you've been I'm doing this now for, you know, almost a year. Like you said, I've been doing it for a couple and it, it's like you're uh, <clears throat> doing an immersion where you where you're learning a language. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then after a while, you start seeing yeah. the images and, and you see. I mean, at this point, I'm recognizing his handwriting. <laughs> you yeah, know I mean? that, that's and, right. You start seeing the signatures. Exactly, exactly. And you can actually see it. So, um, yeah, very cool. Very cool stuff. And, and like like you said, um, once you uh, once you start seeing it, you can't stop seeing it. That's you right. It yeah. Great. Um, so what we're going to look at here today um, not only are the letters placed in designs to make names and words like pentagrams or along lines drawn through letters, um, the angles also match words in numerical values that you've shown in your simple ciphers, reverse ciphers, and, and even more uh, that Sir Francis Bacon was familiar with and kept using. And right. um, what I did is I just started applying that in, in mechanical drawings and um, I start by going corner to corner in a picture. And some of these pictures are really hard to find. I'll see one and then I'm searching Google uh, images to find a better picture that somebody took right over the top of you know, this out of a book or uh, whatever the art might be um, to get the truest angles out of it. And um, um, when you go corner to corner, uh, this, this, produces an X in the center. And uh, this also produces isosceles triangles above and below and side to side. Um, there are two different angles in each isosceles. So the artist is, first of all, creating a perimeter for this artwork. And they're, they're, they're choosing the height to width ratio of the rectangle and then they're designing things inside of it and placing pictures and letters and words over the top of it. And so uh, one day I was just looking at the Shakespeare funerary plaque and going, there's something going on here, even in the perimeter of this plaque. And I started going back to what we did in architectural drafting and drawing in, in junior high school and high school and you always find the center of your paper and then whatever you're designing, you try to center over that center exactly. um, as best as you can. Um, and Bacon and his followers probably had this down to a science. Um, they, were, they were perfect with it. So um, now uh, a mechanical drawing can be designed inside this rectangle. Uh, that I call the blueprint. And a blueprint would be necessary for the drawing. Uh, before any placings of letters or drawings, they might start sketching over this blueprint. And this kind of explains the odd gaps between letters or words while trying to make them fit in these plaques. Right. Um, notice that on the Shakespeare plaque and notice this on the Bacon funerary plaque now. And sometimes letters look out of place, but when you draw a line in an angle that means something through them, it starts to all make sense. So makes sense. Yeah, you know, and I, I found that time and time again, uh, the same thing, ex the exact same thing happens with uh, a couple of maps. In, in fact, that uh, Bacon himself drew, along with a, a map that uh, Sir Walter Raleigh drew. Uh, yeah. When you look at, the, yeah, you look at the negative space, and you realize that. Uh, there's a lot of room there and why would they space it out that way it seems very strange and yeah. suddenly you start drawing lines and everything makes sense yeah very cool. yeah and i'm still trying to catch up with you uh, you were talking about the fourfold cipher last time 
and the odd shaped fourth letter. And um, I, I'm starting to see some of that stuff, but it is, it's tough to learn because it's another language. It is. Uh, and it, it takes a long time. And it, the big thing I really want to point out and, I, and uh, everyone who's joining us tonight, here tonight, um, you know, those of you who are watching tonight uh, and, and watching later uh, the recording, what Jason has done is exactly what I was hoping people would do. Um, you know, I, I wrote the book, I put it out there. I said, Hey, listen, you know, other people, please take a look at this. And, and for example, um, the, a while back I used that Dauphin, uh, image, uh, and, and posted it. And we, we talked a little bit about it, um, on the show, but, um, <clears throat> I had found, you know, some really cool alignments in it. And then you took it and you took it to a whole new level. And mm -hmm. that's really, really what I'm hoping people will do. And, and I, and you, you say you have to catch up with me, but in, in a lot of ways, you're already, you know, taking it above and beyond what I've done. And I think that's really, really cool. And that's what I was really hoping people would do. Yeah. Thanks, so, Jake. Good, good, good on you. You're, you're really killing it with this info for sure. Yeah. Um, so, uh, is, is it a good time to go into the first picture? Yeah, go ahead and, um, go ahead and uh, share your screen and, and once you have that up and switch that over. All right. Let me know if we're doing this right. Yep. All right. Can you guys see that? Uh, they can now. There you go. Okay. Now. Okay. So what we're looking at here is uh, a woodcut, which um, was a difficult process of carving a piece of wood, uh, which would have been in reverse, and then leaving the high points for the ink to lay on. And then this could be printed onto a page, you know, probably for a book. So um, what I'm doing here consistently is I'm uh, um, on center at 61 degrees. I'm going corner from corner to corner to corner. And this is producing a center. Um, and then after I have that center, um, I'm looking at those numbers. And, you know, uh, so on isosceles triangles, you have the degree of 61. That means at the X, it would be 58. And that means the other opposite corner also matches uh, 61 degrees. Um, then on the sides, you also have degrees opposite of 61 would be 29. And then in the center would be 122 degrees. And again, the opposite corner at the bottom would be 29 degrees. Um, so as soon as I put the X over this and I saw that it went through some of these letters, um, I immediately went right to the letters to see, hey, what are these things pointing at? What are they, what are they going over? So... So if we look here, the 61 degrees that created the height to weight ratio of the beginnings of this plaque with the perimeter used goes through the letters B and it's also through the name of Bacon and it goes through the letter A and it goes through the letter L and I have an O next to that because in the Athabash system, O is L. And then we have it going through over here and in, um, but we are missing the uh, the the C to um, spell bacon. Um, but he's done that kind of hidden here at the top where the 61 degrees cross is an X. And again, using the Athbash system, X equals C. So there we have it spelled just in the very beginnings, Bacon, he's signed this and he's, and he's showing us that, hey, we need to look for more stuff. <laughs> and, and that's what the letter C tells us. You know, it's yeah. same thing happened with, um, you know, the cipher text of the plaque uh, of Shakespeare's funerary uh, monument, um, um, where he used the letter C for a couple of different things. And, and one of them was the phonetic word you need to see. Yeah which is what uh -huh. you just pointed out perfectly right there. This is great. Yeah, keep going. Okay, so um, I, I kept on the corner on the right, and you can see the shading's a little bit different um, on this photo. It's very light in this right corner. It's almost drawing you 
to not the left side, but the right side, um, almost like a point of interest. His head is tilted that way. Um, his left arm is up and he's kind of thinking. And um, so you had noticed the, uh, the keystones and other markers on the arch. And so what I did was here is I followed the keystone and let's see, I followed the keystone down and uh, at 84 degrees, those blue lines come down and they land on the letters on the bottom, D and R. And in between the D and the R is the letter A and that is exactly on center. Um, D-A-R is a Hebrew word for mother. So he's making a point that this is very important that he's recognizing a mother uh, in this plaque. So continuing down from the corner, um, I brought the 33 degree line down and that was the first point of interest starting from the, the, the corner that I had and uh, at 33 degrees um, through, through the right side, through his nose, through the right side of the corner of the mouth, uh, through the third knot down and the third knot up on the back of the chair for a second 3-3, three, three, uh, meaning bacon again in simple cipher, um, I think most of us know it by now what we're talking about, but B equals two, A equals one, C equals three, O equals 14, and N equals 13 for a total value of 33 in simple cipher. So um, that line comes all the way through and it has, has several key points that it comes through. Um, I went all the way down to the edge of the corner of the plaque um, where, um, the message begins and on the corner is at 53. Um, at 53, this line lands on the corner. It's the beginning of the message and 53 is Mary in simple cipher. So now we've got, he's talking about a mother and now he's talking about Mary in simple cipher. Um, we can see why this corner was also stepped uh, to probably fit the 53 degrees, because if that corner was square, uh, it would be too high. And right. he had to modify that um, because everything else is going on. It was probably the easiest at the time to just step that corner. Exactly. Um, and you can see each corner on the other side is is different too. So there could even be more to this. Um, so, So those yeah, are some really good finds there and just getting started. Just getting started. Yeah. It, yeah. Like, I would say the same thing. You know, it could even be four more degrees would be 57, which is uh, three times 19, the triple tau, to that other little step there. Okay. That's a possibility. I don't know. But okay. it's really, really cool. Good stuff. Okay. So now what we're looking at is I, I noticed a pentagram shape forming. And so what I wanted to do is just see what it looked like when it finished. Um, and again, in purple, just to show a difference. So there's a lot of lines starting to form here and it could get confusing. Um, but you can see it goes from the edge of the drawing to the edge of the drawing left and right. And um, my interpretation of the lines are uh, as they cross through different places, his his eyes and his mouth is that see, uh, see what's before you, hear, hear the message as it passes through his right ear and um, the message is from the right or the righteous side of his mouth, the, the right corner of his mouth. Um, the right hand is also in a unique position um, at the bottom or at zero degrees on this pentagram. Now that is level. So he is on the level uh, with, with what's going on here. He's, he's telling the truth is what the design is trying to say, I think. I, I, I would agree with that 100%, Jason. Yeah. The, the questions are now starting to kind of flow in and I forgot to mention this. Um, 
keep the questions coming gang um with this presentation we're gonna let J jason just kind of um you know go ahead and just keep on showing uh what he's oh found. yeah it's this it's getting back. better and and we'll 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 look at some of these again absolutely uh, yeah. as we need to so, no, um, so I, we'll come back to your questions so don't don't yeah don't be so so here again in the plaque um and when I zoomed in here, I, I noticed uh, my line was just a little bit off going up to the sea. But what we have here is a redundancy that Bacon is always doing. And in red highlighted letters are the letters B, L, A, N, and C. And um, again, the L in Atbash is the O. So we have a Bacon pentagram here. Um, it is on the center of the plaque and it's just below the, what I'm going to go into next. Um, but let me, let me tell you a little bit about this pentagram because not only is it a shape, um, because that's very simple to draw a pentagram. What he's done is there's signatures on it and I'll explain that in the angles that we're looking at. So this is just awesome. Yeah, this gets really cool. It's so so cool. Um, the Bacon pentagram uh, is on center at 90 degrees. Now going from A at the bottom to C is 67 degrees. Or <laughs> if Francis, the name Francis in simple cipher value. So not only is he putting this stuff in his art to connect just five letters, he's actually making it a degree in which a cipher system that he's continuously using mm -hmm. um, and, and and without without learning from from you and your book jake i i wouldn't have i wouldn't have picked up on this or maybe even been able to find it so um, well, you know um what's what's really neat is um you know i found these same exact sorts of alignments and, and angles and and tricks um in um the what's called the invisible college illustration uh, uh -huh. that i discussed you know a few episodes back. yes um and it, it, this stuff is everywhere it's all over the place and, and so i mean you picking up on it right here i mean this is just really mm -hmm. this is great confirmation for me you know this yes. is just awesome stuff you've done here keep going this yeah is awesome. oh it's gonna get better so <laughs> <laughs> so if you add the 90 degree line that's on center with the new line of 67 degrees that puts us at a total of 157, or uh, that is Fra Rosy Cross. So that's also in your book in Appendix C, which I keep using all the time to put some context to uh, these values that come up. Right. So going from the letter N to the letter B is now 33 degrees. So 33 again uh, means bacon in simple cipher. So he's saying uh, Francis Bacon um, in the angles and he's saying uh, Fra Rosie Cross in the angles. Um, um, also the uh, two angles of 33 degrees make 114 degrees on the center um, at the top of the isosceles triangle. So in the top of this pentagram, um, 114 is in there twice for a total of 228. So you have 114 above, kind of where the S is mm -hmm. and, and SIC, and you have 114 uh, uh, below it uh, for 228. And in 228 in reverse cipher is King Francis the third, or actually King right. Francios the uh, third, yeah. French. Um, so that, that is really cool. So there's a couple of other things in here. I got to jump into, and that's the, uh, the purple triangle here, um, and the, uh, gold triangle coming down. So what I'll do is I'll go to the next picture here. All right, here we go. So this is um, a yellow triangle at 67 degrees. So at, at the degree of Francis, 
um, it comes down to the first letter in the center of the plaque. So this is like double redundant. He's like, look what I can do. And I'm gonna put it right here on this letter. Um, so you can see the only body part that's completely outside of this yellow triangle um, is the right hand. I think that is the righteous hand. And I think it has something to do with him telling the truth. Um, and this also lands on the letter D. And what we're seeing in the purple triangle, let me zoom in on this. Um, okay, so what we're seeing here in this purple triangle are the, the three letters that it touches on the corners and that's D A V. And those are at 63 degrees, but it looks like I, I want to call it 62.5. There's a couple of times where I, I see angles and it looks like a half a degree and it's really hard to call. Um, mm -hmm. But the, what happens is, is the, um, the third angle in that triangle or the, the total um, makes more sense. Right. But um, anyway, D-A-V is short for dolphin, and um, which the term dolphin is the oldest son of the king of France. So what he's saying here is Francis dolphin in these two triangles. Um, and what he's, what he's saying here is um, also at 62.5 degrees, when you add those two together, it is 100 is Francis Bacon and 25 is the letters DAV in simple cipher. So the two total 125. Um, and he's saying me, Francis Dolphin, the Dolphin of France, um, Dolph and um, he is saying Francis II is his father and Mary Stuart, Queen of Scots, is his mother. Um, that's what's going on here. Yeah, 100 percent. And, you know, what's neat is um, uh, it was one of the things that, uh, you know, I, I've been trying to stress to people is that when it comes to these messages that you had mentioned it earlier on about the idea of redundancy. Yeah. Uh, if the the message is important. He repeats it. And um, that is the one consistent message that I wrote about uh, in my book um, and that basically he wants to make sure that that comes through loud and clear. Yeah. yeah. Everything that is complex that, that I look at and find multiple angles and um, I, there's always something related to Mary and, and mother uh, in Hebrew, um, mm -hmm. Dar. Um, let's go to the next uh, pentagram. Um, and let me explain this blue pentagram that overlaps all of this. Um, this blue pentagram um, connects three letters that I have highlighted in, in blue, and it's sharing the A in the center at the bottom. Uh, the word is add. Uh, admirator. And um, this is common when he overlaps his pentagrams um, and showing almost like a family together. Um, he's sharing letters and he's um, overlapping these symbols all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, at, at 75 degrees, which is Stuart in reverse cipher, so, you know, he's, he's, we've got Mary angles up above and now we've got 75 as a Stuart, uh, Queen of Scots uh, angle um, from D to A and uh, back up from A to R. Um, the A is used again. Now this A has been used three times already. Uh, so it's just a really good, important spot um, that he keeps coming back to. 
and overlapping these messages. Um, the R to T and the N to D is at 28 degrees. Um, now it's possible it is at 27 degrees and it's possible it's at 20.5 degrees. Um, I've, I've seen other things that are larger and when you span them out, these, these symbols are smaller. So um, it's really hard to make the difference of where I place it because I've right. placed it at 27, I've placed it at 28. So it's possible that it could be at 27.5, which gets into other complex things that I've seen in other artwork. Um, mm -hmm. But so the interesting thing uh, in either letter, the, uh, the, the 28 um, is the cipher total in simple cipher of ARC. So Moses was abandoned by his mother in an ARC in the river uh, for a chance at survival. So this the story might be here is that uh, Queen Mary had to um, let go of her son um, uh, for his for his for his best interest. Um, and so it, it kind of seems like they share the same story right. um, talking about an arc. Um, which is common in all of his work. There's, there's always 28 degrees. Um, yeah, yeah, sure is. Yeah. Now, this is common in other works. You'll have three letters, but it produces a pentagram, uh, and the points end up on two other letters that are new, um, and those mean something. So, there's a lot going on with the letters NT. Uh, it could just simply mean New Testament. Um, I, you know, Bacon was involved with uh, King James and, and writing the first English Bible. Um, so if you take NT and change it in Athbash cipher, then you have the letters M and the letters F. So you have M for Mary and you have Francis or it could just be the word free Mason. Uh, I don't know. It could be both. Yeah. And the, the other thing too, when you add them together, because it, this was one of the discoveries I made at the very center of the plaque, the mathematical center. Um, when you look at uh, the plaque of Shakespeare's funerary monument, uh, num the character number 153 is the conjoined letters M E meaning me. Mm. 153 yeah. in, in simple cipher is I, Sir Francis Bacon. Yeah. Or I, even yeah. I Rex Francis Bacon. Uh, yeah. But right next to it was the conjoined NT, mm -hmm. uh, which when you add them together in simple ciphers, 32, which in looking at K cipher, 32 is the letter F for Francis. Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, you have that sort of idea at work. And what I think he did was um, that you, you have these multiple layers of meaning where yeah. it, where it's not just this or this. And this is one of the things that, you know, I've, I've discussed with a lot of the other uh, Oak Island theorists, for example, is that, you know, we come up with uh, different interpretations of uh, some of the same information, but it doesn't mean yeah. that <clears throat> those interpretations are mutually exclusive. You know, yeah. it, it could mean all of those things simultaneously. That's right. Yeah. 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 And, and as we're talking, I'm looking at this and I, I see three MEs. Um, that look like they're really important. And uh, I don't know if you can see my mouse right here, but mm -hmm. um, right behind Thomas is the word uh, meet us. And there's an M-E right there. If you look just to the left of it on center, it's going through the letters M-E, like a signature. Um, and if you come back here up top, this word that's got my eye is um, L-V-M-E-N, lumen. And it's cutting through the ME again. So um, those are all clues to look into and, and see what's mm -hmm. surrounding those later. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Uh, one last thing to finish up this photo, and then we'll move on to the last photo and, and open this up to questions, is um, I've got a gold triangle down here at the bottom. And what this is landing on is um, three letters. H O D and H O D is Hod. Uh, this 
is the number eight on the cabal tree of life. And we've seen that used in Oak Island uh, for theories. Mm -hmm. um, we've uh, the mercy stone is, is one of these stones in, in the tree. Um, the total value for HOD is 38. And just learning a little bit about this, when you add up all the letters from one to eight, they total, they total 36. When you add up all the letters one through nine, they total 45 and then one through 10 is 55 and so on. So if you double 36, um, and one of the things they did with, uh, with Hebrew uh, um, numbers, and they would double them or they would triple them. So they would double or triple a number to, to emphasize the significance. So if you double 36, it's the simple cipher of King Bacon. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Wow. So in, in, in 72 is also a uh, cipher signature of his uh, secret identity. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Yeah. And also the interior angle of a pentagram. Okay. Let me see if I can. Shrink this down so I can get to the last photo here. Come on, mouse. There we go. Um, okay, so this got really interesting for me. I started to see something and I started playing with more lines again. So going back to the original of just finding center, um, the 61 degree lines that, that go corner to corner um, those are those are fixed angles that are designed into the height to weight ratio of the rectangle. So the other lines, uh, the 33 degrees, the 53 degrees, those are all floating lines and those are just stopping at significant points like the 33 on his nose. So what I did was I ran the line and angled down until it just hit the top of his head or the crown. Um, at the crown, is again, this number of 27 degrees. And I started to see a formation take shape. And as I went down with familiar numbers to bacon, um, it produced what is uh, proportionate to Nolan's cross on Oak Island. So in the dark blue highlights at the top, um, going over the top of the chair at 27 degrees, would be cone A, and then on his nose would be cone B, and all the way over to the left of the page is cone C. On the 55 degree would be cone D, and on the uh, flower at that intersection and center would be cone E. Um, got it yep. now here. He left a signature on this 67 degree angle. And as it goes through the flower on his foot, um, he's giving a flower to his mother. So let me zoom in on this and I'll explain what this is saying about his mother. So the first letter again was on center and a very special intersection between the Francis and his father, uh, the dolphin. Um, so the letter D, I, and N, when you use the at-bash system, um, the, the I is a Q and the D is a is a W. So and then just below that you have the letters where the 67 degree line is running through the M in Omnia and the S at the end of Civilis. Um, so what 
I am interpreting here is it says Queen Mary Stuart um, with those five letters. Uh, the only letter and marking it goes through is the AE just below the S, and that is a, a combination letter where those are together. And um, you could probably explain what that means better than than I can. But um, well, it, it was it was a common vowel uh, yeah. sound used in in Latin, um, the AE combination, but. Um, when it comes to the, the cipher text, uh, he used it in a variety of different ways because it was really pretty versatile. He could use it as an A, he could use it as an E, or he could, you know, do a substitution. Yeah. You know, using the Atbash system. So um, that's how it was used in a lot of the cipher text, uh, as well as, I mean, if you add them together, it becomes a six, which is the letter F for Francis. Yes. Yeah. And if you separate them, the A is a one and the E is a five for 15 which is 555, which represents the architect. Um, and so mm -hmm. that that is very exciting for me to find a message like that with the Queen MS. Um, yeah, very and, cool. and I've studied the word Queen. I, you probably have. To, I might have found it in your book, but um, a Queen at one point was spelt with a W. Mm hmm. So yep. that that was not this is not far fetched in the 1600s uh, to to use a W to spell the word queen. That's correct. Wow, very cool, man. All right, so went through a lot of um, questions and. Uh, Whole lot of info there, Jason. Great stuff. Hey, thanks. Really great, great, great stuff. Um, just so much fun. Uh, and like I said, you know, it, what's what's cool is uh, that, you know, you and I had, had talked about this before the show even started. But once you start seeing this stuff, you 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 see it in, in a lot of different images. Um, yeah. yeah. First question coming up from uh, Jenny. Uh, she asked early on. So the drawings were modified to fit the angles. Yes. Yeah. You and I uh, were looking at his hand and you'd pointed out that his hand hanging down looked disproportionate. Correct. Um, and it's possible there's a slight disproportion in that right hand. And like you also mentioned, once you see something, you can't unsee it. So every time I look at that hand, it's like, why is it too long? So, <laughs> you know, in the pentagram, when I finish that, it's going through the space between his thumb and his index finger, um, almost representing like he's on the level, he's telling the truth. Right. Um, um, but yes, so the other, when thing, would, the other thing you mentioned though, too, is uh, when you drew the original angles, that was the only part that was outside of that uh, yellow triangle. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so you have um, the right hand, the, the left hand was up in a position yes. towards the head. And the left, the right hand was downward, uh, and you know you see that in a lot of these images of one hand up, one hand down, as above, so below, is mm. the indication. And what you have is the lower uh, extremity was cut off in the sense of um, representing the idea of of higher development, if that makes sense, where you're you're cutting off your your lower basest instincts, yeah. and instead of uh, rising above. Yeah. So, yeah. As I mentioned before, on the 53 degree line, that corner of the plaque looked like it had to be stepped and modified because it, it was it was too high for for 53 to land on it. So right. the artist had to make an adjustment um, to fit it over the blueprint. So they, they would have come up with some basic angles and a perimeter. They would have started sketching over the top of it um, and then it would have started putting letters where they knew they needed letters and coming up with words to make sense. Now, yeah. I think Bacon at this point already had um, many, many words and designs in his bag of tricks and it, it became faster for him. Um, and it was, he, he knew what he was doing. He knew how to build this stuff. Yeah, for sure. 
And that actually brings us to the next question. Daniel uh, asked, uh, maybe I missed it, but who made the wood cut and what year yeah. was it made? Yeah, really good point. Um, so this whole mystery of bacon uh, not dying on Easter Sunday um, in 1626, um, this woodcut was printed, um, it looks like on the bottom it says 1679. Uh, now, I, I don't think Bacon could have lived that long. That would have put him over 100 years old. Right. So um, I do think he lived, and I think it's I think it's plausible even during that time that he could have lived to 100. Um, but anything outside of that, I'm really skeptical. Um, I think uh, it's it's totally plausible that Bacon had already finished some of this stuff um, in preparation for his actual death and, and sitting on these things to release. Um, and I, I think he had a, a group of friends in his secret circle that made sure this stuff got out. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And, and, you know, the, the woodcut itself is of, you know, the monument that was in place already. Yeah. When, when when the woodcut came out, so yeah, um, the idea that those angles already would have been in there, and you know someone just creating a a really good de- uh, uh, image of it yeah. would have just automatically recorded the angles that were already there that he had placed in. That that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, in some woodcuts, I I know of one of them. The artist was named, and uh, I thought that was interesting. Yeah. Um, I might need to go back and look at that artist and see if there's any other connections, but it probably really hard to find any information on that person from 450 years ago. So, yeah, you know, and what I found is, uh, you know, my, my next book is actually about it, it's called the, the ghosts of bacon, go figure. Uh, but it's, um, it's about, you know, his, his aliases and, and the vestiges of these kinds of things that he left behind. Yeah. And, and one of the big things that I found is that um, he uses uh, living artists as his masks. He 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 would create uh, a son of a famous artist, for example, a famous Dutch artist in particular, um, and he would just assume these names and put out artwork under these names. And so, you know, yeah. when 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 I research who these people were there's always the same phrases that come up. Not much is known about so-and-so's childhood, where they went to school, et cetera, et cetera. But suddenly they appear and <laughs> their first mention of them is, you know, yes. and so you, you, you can kind of see that they created these, these uh, aliases and these cutouts yeah. uh, to convey their information. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's really neat. Uh, Ray uh, pointed out, she was going to ask you uh, if you've seen 22.5 degrees. And it, uh, you, you had uh, actually brought that up while you were presenting. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jenny is asking, uh, I wonder if it's, if the different ciphers were for different audiences and that accounts for the redundancies. He wanted everyone to know who he was, but some messages were meant for particular people, et cetera. Uh, I think so, Jenny. Um I don't know what your take is, Jason, but, um, you know, he created multiple, multiple messages and, um, you know, I, I see the same message coming through time and time again, like Jason just pointed out of who his real parents were for sure, For example, let's see. Tom always asks really great questions. He says the length of some of the lines, Hi, the length and it, again, you know, great question. Uh, the length of some of the lines of the pentagrams do not appear to be forming a symmetrical pentagram uh, pentagram shape. Is there yeah. a reason for that? And if so, yes. what it is? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that really caught my eye um, because even though some of them aren't just your typical, well, then they're never typical angles. They're they're always in a degree that matches another name uh, to that pentagram. That's I just keep seeing that frequently. Um, what was different with this one than any of them that I've seen overlapping in each other was uh, the bacon one that I explained was on the center. And so I, I didn't bring this up and I'm glad Tom mentioned this. This is why it's offset um, on that first one that was red. The line going down through the A goes through the A down to the bottom of the perimeter. So 
that gave me another clue that he is using the perimeter of this artwork, um, not only for the symbols, but for the story. So right. where other ones, they could just be floating in the middle. Um, there are symbols on the Shakespeare plaque that go all the way to the edge of the perimeter. And it's like, well, why is it there? There's no letter there. Um, so you just kind of have to follow what it's telling you. And then it's verified in the angle. So when it goes all the way to the bottom, that's when 67 degrees makes sense. Because if I tried to go just to the A and then back up to the, to the C, I think it was, um, mm -hmm. the degree is off. It doesn't match. But then when you follow through what it's leading you to, uh, it's like an aha moment. You got goosebumps again. And so what it did was it put his mother's pentagram on center. It put him offset. And I forgot to say this earlier. There, there's a there's a, a marital relationship in the father um, daw triangle and the, the mother dar pentagram. And the the dar is in the male point going up and the female is going down. And, and so you you yeah. yes, yes, yes. You, you have the you have the two creating an offspring, which was the the bacon printogram off to the side. And then oh. when that shifted off to the side, I said, wait a minute, here's the HOD on center now. So it put it on center on on Bacon's pentagram and it's mm -hmm. like, okay. Um, I, I think Bacon identifies with the Hod. Um, so the Hod represents majesty and splendor. And mm -hmm. uh, it's also um, a, a submission. Instead of conquering an obstacle in one's way, subduing oneself to the obstacle. And it's like, hmm, this wow. kind of sounds like Bacon's life. Yeah. Um, sure. There's another piece of artwork that we looked at uh, talking about the dolphin and the, the little child pointing at the, the plaque. Yeah. Um, and one of those degree angles I found goes right through a, a figure eight on the ground. And it's like, yeah, he's, he's saying I'm the hot or I, 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 uh, I, I relate to the hot. Um, yes. So and within, the, within the context of that image too, it's very extremely telling at that. Point. Yeah. 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 Good question. Uh, thanks, Tom. You always ask good questions. As usual. Uh, Stephanie uh, McPeak-Peterson, uh, former guest on the show, uh, she says it might, might be more than just significance. Uh, doubling and tripling is the reconciled nature of the harmonic series Bacon dropped clues in on New Atlantis. So, you know, with, with her interview, she was talking about um, music and harmonic theories. Yes. And, and, and a series and how doubling and tripling was, you know, something that was really, you know, relevant and important to that whole aspect. And we see it here again. And yeah. I, I, I agree with you, Stephanie. I, I don't think that's a coincidence at all. No. And um, definitely have to throw this one up here. Uh, now Jason is making my head hurt. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> that's from John. <laughs> okay. Uh, and so uh, John Edwards is also giving a shout out to Tom Burns. He's saying, what? Another hit, hidden Nolan's cross, huh? Yeah. Thanks, John. Um, so Daniel Spino, another great question. Um, and this is, this, is one I, this is one that I get frequently, particularly about my book, says, uh, why wouldn't have Bacon been kept in Scotland and raised by Mary or by a clan in Scotland? Why was it in his best interest to go to England, in your opinion, be raised by Nicholas Bacon? And also, thanks. Great job, Jason. And I agree 100 percent, Daniel. Yeah. In, in my opinion, um, this would not have been allowed. Uh, you had Mary, Queen of Scots, returning uh, to the islands. Uh, not only was she a challenger to uh, Elizabeth, you know, she had every right to the throne that Elizabeth had. Uh, some really believe more so. Uh, but if she's, if she's returning with a child, an heir, which Elizabeth did not have, that would have made her far more attractive to the throne uh, and, and to all of Mary's supporters and even some of Elizabeth's supporters at that point uh, because they needed, you know, an heir to the throne. And so th this was one of the conditions of her returning 
uh, she needed permission to return to the islands from Elizabeth and, and she was actually seeking her protection. Um, and so because of that, uh, I would have seen Elizabeth and her advisors very craftily saying, well, yeah, you can come back, but you have to take, I, I'm going to be taking your child and placing him with one of my most trusted uh, advisors, Nicholas Bacon, and one of my best friends, Lady Anne Bacon. Uh, that would have been the condition of Mary's return. And um, and it makes a lot, a lot of sense. So in my opinion, that's, that's what happened here. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Ray's telling you, um, awesome detective work. John <laughs> Edwards, our friend, amazing Jason. Thank you. Uh, really great comments, gang. And so Awoken One is asking another good question. If I'm understanding this right, couldn't it be that Francis Bacon is in fact hinting that the real treasure is not buried in the money pit on Oak Island, but somewhere in or around Nolan's Cross? Well, I... I, I didn't get into that upper right-hand corner where the arm of cone B continues up on that 33 degree angle into the corner. Um, but that has been talked about on Oak Island. Um, it was in our friend Chris Dona's episode mm -hmm. of, um, that was episode 21 yep. of uh, season six. And uh, if you go back and watch that episode, um, he he was looking down the side of of the swamp. Um, now, if this what what I believe is a proportionate uh, Nolan's cross in this in this art, the the length of that arm would go down to about the beach. Um, there's numerous stones down there. The problem is that far down, there's been so much work uh, maintaining that road that cuts across the base of the swamp. Um, right. You'd have to find something with a symbol on it to know it's, to know it's, it's right. Um, so I don't know. I, I just, I just read what I saw and, and placed everything there. And I, there's a lot, I, I don't know. Um, I, I wouldn't think you'd put a giant X or a cross on the treasure. Um, I, I think, I think you have to find a perspective like the corner of that drawing and say, hey, if I put an angle at 55 degrees, where does it put me? Um, if I put an angle at 67 degrees at the base of the cross, cross what part of the island does that land me on? And that, that might, be, uh, um, it might be a question for Aaron to help us solve. <laughs> yeah, uh, no kidding. But, that that you know pushes those angles and and everybody has theories over there on that side of the island um mm -hmm. some of the stuff that i've done not related to this picture it, it crosses over uh the money pit and and that's that's exciting because it's like well if they ever find something in the money pit we're just going to reverse engineer what we already know and then probably figure out oh well we missed this because this is what it meant yes um, yeah and that, that's that's my my sentiment exactly. And it, yeah. there there are a few things that I, I mean I really wish I could uh, uh, get into in terms of my own research, uh, but that's still pending. And um, uh, but I, I have a part of the answer to, to that question uh, that we'll have to save for another time. But I can't wait to share it with you guys, and Jason. You're gonna yeah. be on the first. It's all exciting. It, it's just fun. It is. It is. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Um, Daniel asked another good question. The legs in the woodcut look familiar to Doug Stale's Dugdale sketch of the original Shakespeare funerary monument. Have you done analysis on that sketch where Shakespeare's arms create an interesting angle? I haven't done that analysis. Um, I'm, very, I'm very familiar with the Dugdale sketch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, the Dugdale sketch has its own issues and problems, in my opinion. Uh, but, um, you know, th there's a lot of interest there. And uh, I, I think that would be an interesting comparison to make. I don't know. What do you think, Jason? Yeah, it would. And um, I don't know with Dugdell, the the timeline um, and the artist that was being used. Um, but I mean, there couldn't have been too many people with the accuracy of woodcutting. So they must have had who was the best, who was second best, who was third <laughs> best and trying to contract this guy. Um, 
to, to hand him a, a drawing in reverse so they could cut it out where it was going to lay down on a piece of paper and, and how we see it. So amazing artwork. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And That's where really are cool. these woodcuts? Where are they? Wouldn't that be amazing? The, original, the originals. Wow. Could you imagine? Wow. You imagine? Yeah. Very cool. Good answer. Um, wow. Still trying to catch up with the questions here. Um, oh, John has a good comment here. Uh, this is the same way things shifted in the first folio page layouts. The message and angles pre preceded the layout of the pages. Yeah, absolutely, John. Uh, here again is another example of the sequencing and the methodology of the encoding process preceding the execution encoding itself. Absolutely. That, that's the nature of steganography. The idea of, you know, having a surface message that just looks normal, uh, but really uh, underneath the surface of it, um, you know, there's, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of things going on, a lot of messages. Yeah. Jenny was wondering if anything, um, any of the points line up with any known constellations. Um, I haven't looked at any of that yet uh, in, in this particular image. I don't know about you, Jason. Uh, again, go back and watch Chris Dona's episode and he talks yeah. about Virgo and he talks about uh, the star Spica, I think is how it's pronounced. Mm -hmm. And um, it's right down there on the edge of the swamp. So I, I don't know. That was something I, again, knew to and, and looking at constellations. Um, I'm coming across stuff all the time and ancient constellations and trying to understand constellations of Hercules. And um, it all gets very interesting. And, you know, I, I'm just yeah. trying to learn that stuff still. And, you know, um, Chris had shared uh, his latest work with me. Uh, you know, just over the summer and we were talking about it and, and he had been able to actually use um, the, the uh, plaque of Shakespeare's funerary monument. And he was able to use that overlaid with um, uh, doing an overlay on the island, the map of the island, along with um, uh, Aaron Helton's uh, LIDAR uh, image. And he was able to, to position correctly the original position, uh, position of cone A. Um, that was some of his latest work. And he, once he did that, uh, a whole series of interesting angles unfolded uh, mm. that were all Bacon cipher signatures. That was, that was the root of his latest, uh, uh, his latest theory. And uh, I have all of that information he left for me. So at some point we'll be rolling that out for everyone, all of the viewers um, and in also the Oak Island team, I know that they're uh, interested in what he was working on most lately. Awesome. So, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, yeah, exactly. John, uh, Mary and a child were a direct threat to the crown and Elizabeth. Absolutely. Um, in my opinion, uh, from what my research shows, uh, Francis Bacon was a state secret and, uh, they were, they were going to keep it that way. Another good question. Um, is it possible Bacon was repeating messages using different formats and ciphers to ensure someone would eventually successfully interpret one, guaranteeing his message got out? Everything I'm doing, I see the same, the same ones. Uh, now, sometimes the angles change, but the angles are still representative of a name in, in simple or reverse cipher. Right. And um, if, if there's one that I'm missing, it's probably because I'm not up to speed on K cipher or another cipher. Um, Right. But I, I'm seeing the same thing over and over again. And that's what's made it quicker and uh, to, to, to look at something and start this process that I explained um, going corner to corner and seeing where those land and looking for clues and just kind of building off of it. Yep. Yep. Um, Penny's a, a regular, my sister. Thanks for <laughs> joining us. Great guest as always. Uh, Daniel Spino, um, do you believe the reported birth date of Bacon is accurate? Uh, I do. Uh, it just everything makes sense. Uh, and when it comes to that birth date, there's no reason to um, change it, I don't think. Uh, I think the year is accurate for sure um, with her returning, uh, his mother returning. Um, and uh, I, I, think, uh, I think the day could be coded, the day and the month could be coded. Um, so that, that's a possibility. No. Uh, well, one thing I've noticed with some of his, um, <laughs> the, the birth dates of, uh, some of his, uh, aliases, uh, are when, when you take the, um, first two digits and add them to the second two digits, 
they actually form a, a bacon si a signature uh, mm -hmm. sometimes. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, good point, uh, John. Court Lindahl discusses the ongoing theme of Arcadia in his latest book. This is such a great point, Tom. Uh, absolutely the case. Yeah. Yeah. Court's um, latest book, everyone, if you haven't, if you haven't taken a look at it, you, you got to see it. You got to read it. Um, just top notch, top notch researcher. Um, you know, woken one with a comment. Uh, logically, if anyone wanted to safely bury a priceless amount of treasure on Oak Island that no one would find easily, you would bury it deep and then cover it over and, with a man made swamp. <laughs> That's sure. Tired. Uh, this the studies show that, you know, it wasn't there before and now it is. I So it's doing something. Absolutely. And, yeah. um, you know, and Dr. Ian Spooner, you know, with, with his work has basically scientifically proven that it was a man-made swamp. It was yeah. a man-made construction back in the yeah. 1600s. Yeah. Uh, one of the cipher texts that haven't made it into my first book, but will be in the second one because they still, they continually unfold as I work on this information. Um Basically, he talks about um, one of the one of the messages is specifically about Oak Island, and um, <clears throat> it, it states explicitly, you know, due east. Actually, excuse me, due west of my pond is what he called huh. it. Uh -huh. And now back then, it would have been a pond due to succession yeah. over after four hundred years of succession, a pond becomes a swamp, and that's exactly yeah. what Doctor Ian Spooner had. Had mentioned so I, I think that's really interesting I do have another drawing that I did these mechanical lines over the top of and I, I think just off the top of my head on two lines it went through the letters uh, O and I and um, a, a cross shape proportionate but I don't think it was as close to proportionate as what this one is uh, but there was a shape there uh, right next to the O and the I um, so I, I don't know. It's just, I go back to things. I look at them and sometimes come back at it with a fresh mind and, and pick something out. That's just, it's cool. Yeah, it really is. And, and you know, one of the yeah. big things that, um, I le I've learned over, particularly when I, whenever I'm looking for information on, uh, about Oak Island is, um, you know, recognizing that it wasn't called that, you know, back in the 1600s, you know? Yeah. And, and so, um, we I don't do. know that it was called that. It could have been secretly called that. And then they could have changed Absolutely. the name. But Absolutely. yeah, I've got a list of the names somewhere around here. Well, the um, are piling up. yeah, you, you can add this one to it. And this one's from me, from me to you. Um, uh, the Isle of the Lions of the Sea. Hmm. Well, that's all I'm going to say. Hmm. That, that, that just starts ringing bells. So <laughs> starts ringing bells. Um, yeah. Uh, John, uh, in my opinion, uh, whatever treasure is there, they will not bury it all in one place, different spots or areas. Yep. Uh, eggs in a basket, John, eggs in a basket. That's right. Yep. Um, Jenny's asking, have you found any other messages in any of the other ciphers besides those identifying who Bacon was? Uh, yes. Go, go ahead, Jason. Yeah. Because, uh, just like the, the, the purple triangle that I showed, um, with the letters D A V for short for dolphin. Um, that's just how they, they would spell it with the alphabet that they had back then. Um, mm -hmm. and then the dar triangle, uh, the first time I found that was on the Shakespeare plaque and, uh, it really opened up, uh, yep. really opened up a lot more for what I was looking at and then began learning, um, and just grew from there. So, Everything that I've done, I'm seeing Dar for his mother and, ex and explaining in degrees, uh, typically 53 for Mary. Um, this was the first time I found a cipher running through line or degree 67 on this picture where it said Queen MS, which I believe is Mary Stewart. So um, I, I'm still looking and, and I'll be looking for more, but. The answer is yes. It's yeah. in there. I, I have to, Jenny. Yeah, great, great answer, Jason. Um, some of the most surprising messages I found uh, weren't just about, um, you know, some of his uh, aliases, but one of them was actually about one of his contemporaries, uh, Sir Walter Raleigh. And um, you're, you're going to see be seeing a lot more about him in my latest work uh, because uh, if, if you think uh, 
Sir Francis Bacon is a, is a rabbit hole. So is Walter Raleigh. And, um, and so there, there's a lot of, uh, <clears throat> I, I, let's put it this way. I, I have some information to indicate that um, while he was supposed to be arrested in um, uh, the Tower of London by James I, uh, he may have actually been operating as a privateer for James the first in under a different name. So hmm. uh, it, it's really pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, you're, you're, you're saying it for sure. Very interesting presentation. <laughs> I'm, I'm still a student. Absolutely. Yeah. We all are. We all are. Yeah. And, uh, that's really the big message here. I think is that, you know, uh, the best part of all of this is that, uh, we're all always students and, and we're all going to be able to learn from each other now. Yeah. Um, unlocking a lot of these different secrets. Cause I, I, I think it's just really, really cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Daniel's telling you that you're going to have to write a book next. <laughs> Great hey, job. If I can uh, organize my thoughts and, and actually do that, um, uh, I'll, I'll come to Jake for help because. Hey man, any time, but I'll, I'll tell you, if I can do it, you can do it <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, John uh, Bacon was reported to have died on the ninth day of yeah. April. Here. Yeah, morning, Savior's resurrection, Easter. Uh, coincidence or ascended master? Uh, well, I think we know the answer. Yeah, <laughs> it was a, it was a philosophical death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Let's see. And as you mentioned, you've you've seen uh, other aliases and and things. Uh, this photo was the first uh, that I seen an alias that has my attention. Um, I, I didn't see it in anything else, but I'll, I'll go back and try to find it in other works. Um, but that was that was exciting. Yeah, yeah, it really is. And um, <clears throat> one of the cool things of this is once it, what I started doing was um, a lot of the messages started to come out. And so that's what led me to look at uh, the uh, cipher values of his, you know, true identity of, of Francis the third and all of the, the different sorts of permutations that that would entail. Um, but the other thing it did was I also made sure that I, I was familiarized myself with uh, the bacon sign or the seg cipher signatures of Anthony Bacon, as well as uh, Walter Raleigh. And um, that has yielded even more results at this point. So I, in my humble opinion, I mean, they were the RC, the three of them, hmm. but, uh, yeah, Daniel, he didn't die then. I agree. Um, woken one. Uh, thanks so much, man. The evidence is groundbreaking. The research is compelling and the unveiling of Francis Bacon is more on the edge of your seat than trying to unravel Nostradamus <laughs> predictions. <laughs> Respect. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff, Jason. Um, all right, gang, any other questions for the good of the order here? Now's the time to ask them. And if not, Jason, uh, I, I can't thank you enough, man. Uh, this was really, really great. Um, and, you know, every time you post something, uh, I've been, you know, really following it closely because, like I said, you're doing exactly what I was hoping people would do if, if they read my book. Um, and uh, the, the fact that you're actually doing it and, and, you know, just finding some really, really cool information is just, that's really gratifying for me personally um, in, a, in a very selfish way. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to lie. I just, I, I love that you're doing that. Um, and uh, th thanks for what you're doing and thanks for coming on the show. This was really, really great. This went fast, an hour and 17 minutes and uh, it just flew by. So, yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. And listen, uh, when you find more, anything else you uh, discover and you really want to uh, uh, get the information out there, you've been doing some really amazing posts in all of the Facebook groups. Uh, I'd love to have you come back on and share what you found. Yeah. Thanks, Jake. <laughs> Thank you. All right, gang. Uh, this is it. This is uh, the October 3rd. We're in October already. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. uh, October 3rd. Uh, edition of Ghosts of Bacon. Uh, thanks for joining us tonight. Had a lot of uh, live viewers here, Jason. A lot of, lot of interest in your information. What great research. Uh, thanks again. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.